What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I'm Reggie Bryant. I'm the author of The Wealth Journey and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth. Today we're going to talk about a topic that I'm extremely passionate about. It's about the habits that are keeping you poor. Some of these are going to be money habits. Some of these are just going to be regular everyday life habits. And just know when I say poor, I'm not talking about you don't have any money necessarily. That's what broke is. Poor is a mindset and it is way worse than being broke but I'm going to give you some tips and insight in this video and I'm going to tell you the habits to stay away from if you don't want to be either or because no one wants to be broke or poor so we're going to dive right into it so the first thing is being around people and surrounding yourself with people who do not help you grow there are hindrances of yours in your life that's like the worst thing you can do because the people you associate yourself with end up becoming parts of who you are if you ever hung around somebody for so long that you start kind of talking like them a little bit or you might say a certain word that they say all the time maybe you start doing the stuff that they do you might start watching the same shows they watch you might have the same habits they have you know that saying is true when they say you are the five people you spend the most time with you will start to act like them and do the things that they do. You may not be the same person. You may not have everything in common. You might not take on every trait that they have, but they'll have enough of an impact on you that you start doing the things that they do and start thinking the way they think. And that is extremely dangerous because like I said, being poor is a mindset. Their mindset can then become contagious. If it's one against five and all of them have a poor mindset, I don't care how much of a rich mindset or an abundance mindset you think you have, they gonna get you. They're gonna milk you and drain you for all that you're worth. And don't mess around and tell them your goals or your aspirations or your dreams. They're gonna shoot you all the way down. They're gonna tell you stuff like it's not possible. They're gonna be saying things that make a lot of sense. And it's gonna have an impact on how you think about life. That's extremely important. You wanna surround yourself around people who are gonna help you grow, who are rooting for you, who want the best for you. And even if you say something to them that's far-fetched, they're gonna be like, yeah, you can absolutely do that. You just gotta put the work in. People that are gonna hold you accountable and be there by your side when you need them. Those are the type of people you want in your circle. Your circle of association, socialization, all those fancy words that end with Asian, you gotta be around them. And I went back home to North Carolina to visit family last week. I told my mom, I was like, I would rather be by myself than spend time with five people that aren't helping me grow, aren't adding value to my life, aren't doing anything but just sucking time and energy from me. We're too old for that. We work too hard for that. Why are we, why are we spending time with people who are not adding value? You can love someone from a distance, but why spend majority of your time with people who aren't gonna help you? Why spend time with people who are only gonna bring you down? Especially, think about it like this, especially if you're somebody who's focused on your goals and your dreams and everything is so important to you in life that you're aiming for, you come first. And when you come first, that means the people that you surround yourself around, are going to, you're gonna get very selective about who those people are because if you're not, you're gonna be spending time with people who hold you back. You're gonna be focused on getting a good job and getting good grades. They're gonna be focused on partying and sleeping around. For a perfect example, you're gonna be focused on saving and building an emergency fund. They're gonna be focused on spending and stunting on the next guy who doesn't have the money. You're gonna be focused on reading and investing. They're gonna be focused on gambling. Do you see the inconsistency? Do you think not any of that is gonna rub off on you? That's like if you're somebody who doesn't drink and all they ever do is drink, you think they're not gonna say, hey, you wanna drink? Even though they know good and well you don't drink, do you wanna be around people like that? I don't understand how that's adding value to your life when they're trying to do the exact opposite of what you're doing. It's not adding value. I'm not saying never see them. I'm not saying never talk to them. I'm not saying never associate with them. I'm saying they shouldn't be the five people that you spend the most time with. That's what I'm saying. I would much rather spend most of my time by myself than be associated with people who are doing opposite things that I wanna be doing because that's not adding value to my life. And I'm sure in their eyes, I'm not adding value to their life. So we're both at a loss, so what's the point? Don't let other people's mindset rub off on you. That's number one. The second thing that will keep you poor is comparing yourself to others, having that jealousy, having that envy about yourself, like, I want this. Why do they have this? Counting other people's pockets, thinking that someone has it better than you when you really don't even know. 
I made a whole video about that one. Just don't fall into a comparison trap. You should always want to do better, but want to do better for you. Don't worry about what the next guy is doing. That's something that's keeping you poor because you're literally spending time that you have available to improve your life, but you're spending that time thinking about other people and what they're up to, what they're doing, how they got to where they're at. You're not even doing anything for yourself. What I tell you, didn't I tell you, you come first? So if you come first, how are you worried about everybody? Does that even make sense to you? And I'll give you a perfect example. I'm an extremely hard worker. I always want to perform at the absolute top level. So one time I went for promotion and I was second in the running. I didn't get it. Another guy got it, but then the manager called me and said, hey, hey, you were my second choice, but sorry you didn't get it this time. I could have worried about the other guy and I could have worried about, well, I don't think he deserves it over me. And I could have worried about all of that stuff. I could have been negative. I could let my work ethic just go out the door, but I didn't do any of that stuff. I just kept focusing on myself, not even worry about any of that stuff. I was a little salty, I ain't gonna lie to you, but I wasn't pinpointing this guy who got it. All he did was went for it. I can't be mad at him for going for it. I can't be comparing myself to him like, oh, how did, that's, that's spending valuable time being upset about something that I can't change. How is that gonna add money in my pocket? How is that gonna add value to my life? That's a poor mindset worried about stuff that you can't control. How's about, well, I'm gonna just keep improving. Forget about the next guy and all this. I'm gonna just keep improving. I'm gonna just keep coming every single day to work. I'm gonna keep on improving. I'm gonna keep getting these numbers up and I'm gonna make sure that they understand that they made a mistake by not promoting me. And then you know what happened? I got promoted. I wasn't out here feeling sorry for myself and crying myself to sleep and complaining about my situation for what? That's not adding no value. So make sure you don't get caught up in the whole gossiping and talking about people. My time is too valuable. My time is too good to be sitting around talking about people, especially talking negative about people. If you're gonna talk about people, talk positive about them. Uplift their name. Don't drag their name through the mud like, they're not even there to defend themselves. I just think in this day and age, in this time of social media, I think we spend too much time concentrating and focusing and highlighting other people. What about us? It's just like when you find out a celebrity is dating this person or this celebrity just cheated on his wife or this celebrity has these political views. Bruh, why do you care about that? How is that adding anything to your life? It's not changing your life in a positive way. It's not doing anything. Meanwhile, they're still getting paid. They don't even know you exist. You're over here talking junk about them. Does that make sense to you? Because it doesn't make sense to me. Let's move on. Having a victim's mentality. This is my absolute favorite topic. I think I should talk about this a lot more on my channel. As a matter of fact, this year I will spend much more time talking about the victim's mentality on this channel and how it can actually destroy you. It's a destroyer of happiness, it seriously is, but you've gotta stay away from the victim's mentality. All of us have our hands that were dealt. Some of us are gonna get uh, better hands than other people are dealt. That's just, that's just how it is, that's life. But the one thing that is consistent about life is life is absolutely unfair for every single person on this earth at some capacity. But you really have to realize just how fortunate, how blessed you are that you have the things that you have and you have the opportunities that are still surrounding around you. Whether, whether or not you realize it, you are extremely blessed. If you have clean water, if you woke up today, if you have your health, if you eat food, if you have a roof over your head, you are doing significantly better than a lot of other people in other countries. The reason why the victim's mentality can keep you poor is because this is gonna sound crazy, right? But it's true. You, It makes you become very reasonable, right? And being reasonable is a good trait when it comes to certain things. You wanna be reasonable with people. You wanna be kind with people. At some extent, you do have to be somewhat reasonable when it comes to people, when it comes to life and your outlook. You have to have an open mind about certain things, but there's also a part of you that must be extremely unreasonable. When it comes to my life, when it comes to my future, I'm gonna be extremely unreasonable because I'm not gonna let anything in front of me or even in my past impact anything that's going to come in my future. I'm gonna be extremely unreasonable about that stuff. So if you're living paycheck to paycheck right now and you just kind of shrug your shoulders and say, well, 
it's just how it is for some people. I mean, some people are more blessed than others. You know, some people just have money and some people don't. And, you know, it's rigged and society's against me and politics are against me. And now you're just feeling like you have no control over anything. You're being too reasonable. You're allowing a reality that you've been taught from birth to take over your reality right now. That's allowing your past to catch up to your future, which is right now. I'm not allowing anything. I don't care what people say. I've always, like ever since I was a kid, I've always questioned certain things. I've always questioned things because how could you allow an idea or a thought completely hold you back from what you want out of life. Last time I checked, if you want something, you gotta work for it. If you don't like something about your life, you gotta work for it. You have to make a change. If you don't like the way your body looks, make a change in your diet, in your exercise routine. If you telling me, you know what I'm saying, that you want to lose 20 pounds, for example, or if you wanna gain 20 pounds of muscle, but you haven't lifted a single weight, you haven't looked up workout routines, you haven't set up a workout routine for yourself, you haven't, haven't adjusted your diet to assist you in getting these results, what makes you think you're going to have a freaking six pack in six months? If you're living paycheck to paycheck, but you haven't picked up extra hours at work, even though they do provide them for you, and you haven't been looking at tracking your expenses every single week for a whole month to then pick up on your spending patterns every single month. If you haven't looked into other ways to make extra money, not caring about how many hours you have to put in to then get the result that you and your family deserve, how can you then say, oh, well, I guess it's just like that for me. No, it doesn't have to be. It doesn't, have, it doesn't matter what unfavorable situation you're in. There's always something that you can do about something. It ain't gonna happen, you know what I mean, overnight. It's not gonna happen overnight. But in a year, in two years, in six months, in eight months, it's very achievable. Things can be done a lot more quickly than we think they can, but we don't allow them to because we have our own self-limiting beliefs and our mind is so powerful that it will hold us back from our true potential and from what our destiny should be. That's a poor mentality. Having a victim's mentality is extremely poor. Like just imagine walking outside and some random person much bigger than you just beats the crap out of you for no apparent reason. Are you gonna be afraid every single day of going outside? Or are you just gonna be like, well, you know what? I'm gonna learn how to fight. I'm gonna take martial arts classes. I'm gonna lift some weights. I'm gonna learn how to duck, dodge, block, hit. You don't ever wanna have to be in a situation that's that confrontational, but to know what to do in those situations would make you a much more powerful person. You'll be able to protect your family You'll be able to protect yourself. So it's like that with money too. If you end up living in a paycheck to paycheck situation because the job that you ended up wanting and the job that you ended up getting actually doesn't pay what you thought that they were gonna pay and the cost of living is much higher than what you expected the cost of living to be. And now you live in an apartment where the rent is too expensive and food is extremely expensive and gas is expensive and you have a car note that's due. That's you walking outside and life's beating the crap out of you. So why not? get up and learn how to fight. Fighting is learning about how to manage your money. Fighting is learning how to track your expenses. Fighting is budgeting and saving because that's your self-defense. That's your defense against life. If you lose your job, at least you have an emergency fund that at least has five figures in it. But if you don't prepare yourself to even learn that those things exist or how to even get there, then you're gonna be lost. You have to learn how to fight back against life. And if you're gonna be a victim about it, I'm, I'm gonna tell you, life is not for the weak. It is not for the faint of heart. You have gotta be a tough person to go through life and really succeed and really thrive because life has a special way of knocking you down. It showed us that in 2020. It showed me that in 2022. I went through an extremely extremely hard emotional time in 2022, but I had to keep going. I had to keep performing. I couldn't just stop. Life stops for no one. Time stops for no one. So to be a victim and to just allow time to go by while you're soaking over and over again, to me as an adult, as a man, is unacceptable. I don't accept that of myself. I will push myself regardless of how I'm feeling because I am not a victim. 
I'm not saying it's a bad thing to feel like a victim sometimes. I'm not saying it's, it's a bad thing to feel sad or upset sometimes. I'm not saying you have to be stone-faced, tough, cold all the time. I'm saying when you fall, you have to get up. We all fall sometimes in some way, whether it's mentally, spiritually, physically, financially. But if you don't pick yourself up, who do you think will? Are you waiting on someone to come to your rescue? Because I know, I, I already know the reality of life. Ain't nobody coming to save me. I got to do it for myself. So make sure as you go throughout life and you make financial decisions, understand some mistakes may be made. You may make some mistakes with credit cards, but there's knowledge bases on the internet, on YouTube, on Google, in books. I have a book, by the way. There's coaching services that I also provide, and a lot of them are free. I do have free coaching services. There's so many ways that you can improve your situation. So don't allow those three things that I just talked about. Don't allow being around the wrong people. Don't allow comparing yourself to others, and don't allow a victim's mentality keep you from your financial destiny that you and your family deserve. Anyway, that is the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.